Welcome to the Bioptimizer's Awesome Health Podcast. And now, here's your host, Wade T. Lightheart. What is Awesome Health? It's actually an acronym that stands for Air, Water, Exercise, Sunshine, Optimizers, Mental Beliefs and Attitudes, and Education. These are the pillars of peak health, and my team and I have created a free 12-week course that you can use to transform. Each day, you'll get a written and video lesson delivered to your inbox. Everything is covered from the foundations of digestion to advanced alternative therapies few people know about. And again, it's 100% free. Just go to bioptimizers.com. That's B-I-O-P-T-I-M-I-Z-E-R-S. Dot com. Good afternoon, good morning, and good evening. I'm Wei T. Lightheart on the Awesome Health Podcast, and we've got a very interesting guest today, uh, Tasia Tellis. And what's interesting about Tasia is she is, well, she's kind of like Superwoman, basically. <laughs> Yeah, she was born in Toronto, just like me, and uh, got into business and then went into the arts. And now she's doing movies and podcasts and she's doing all these different things. She runs a restaurant on top of that. And somehow she stays fit and beautiful and all these amazing things that everybody wants to know. I want to find out, we're going to dive into how does she do all this? How does she manage all this? What are the challenges? What are the things that she's picked up and learned so that you can apply in your life? Tasha, welcome to the hey! show. Thank you so much for having me. That was such a great intro. Oh my gosh. <laughs> well, thank you so much. Um, it's so interesting. We were ch- chatting just before the podcast here and um, you have such a, what would seem to be almost a conflictive mentality. On one level, you're an artist. On another level, you're a business person. Before we get into all that, let's start at where did you all get started and how did the things kind of develop over the years and 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 so, so our listeners can find out. Oh my gosh. I mean, like, that's always a fun question to answer. Cause it's like, where do you begin the story? When I was five, I, uh, no, <laughs> I, I, I mean, I guess things really started when I decided I wanted to go into finance. I knew that I was an artist and creative at heart, but I also kind of wanted to make sure that I had an understanding about like money and about how to manage my finances. So um, I moved to Montreal, which was terribly cold, a cold that I was not familiar with. And while I was getting my finance degree, um, I got hit with meningitis and I was taken down for about three months. I wasn't able to walk. And I just remember, like I remember so vividly the first day that I was able to walk and how like the sun was shining on the streets and all this kind of stuff. And in the three months that I was lying in bed sick, I didn't realize, like I thought it was going to be, like I knew meningitis was serious, but I didn't know that it was going to leave me with a whole bunch of subsequent health issues that I would have to respond to and learn about in this journey into health um, and wellness would begin. And so um, I ultimately finally got my degree in finance. The stock market crashed. (laughs) (laughs) That happened to the wolf on Wall Street too, right? I called my mom and I was like, mom, I'm coming to Vancouver and I'm going to be an actress. And my mom was like, Oh, geez, Tassia. <laughs> and I was just very, very, you know, resolved to make it work. I was like, I had my degree. I finished, you know, I got my education. My parents were both professors. So it was very um, important for them, you know, and for me that I had my degree. But then I just jumped into uh, acting and studied my ass off and worked really hard. And I got to uh, be where I am today with that. And Along the way, I met my partner and we opened a restaurant and, and we're opening our second in Toronto in two months. So um, right now I'm living between Los Angeles and Vancouver and Toronto and life is crazy, but it's good. Yeah. It's, there's a lot to unpack inside of that. Um, how old were you when you got um, meningitis? I was 22. And that this can be an oftentimes even a fatal condition. I mean, it must have been scary yeah. when you got that. 
yeah. diagnosis and what led into that and then what led out of it? I think, um, I think the stress of being in finance, like there was kind of like a lot of stress in my life at the time. And there was also, you know, the fact that I was living in, you know, where it was minus 40 degrees Celsius with, you know, plus windshield factor, which were terms I didn't even know before. <laughs> and I was also, you know, away from home for the first time. So I, I did, I wasn't taking care of myself. I was, you know, that college kid that's like craft dinner and junk food. And even when you think you're eating healthy, you're still not eating healthy. You know, when I had to make my salads, it'd still be loaded with a bunch of crap unbeknownst to me. So I think, you know, the, the weather and, and my health wasn't probably the best. And then just the stress of life just made for this perfect storm to set me up to get sick. Yeah. And, and coming out of that, um, what was, what were some of the things that you figured out that you had to change in your lifestyle? Cause I think a lot of people oftentimes they don't have like a, a health crisis. I always say is it is an opportunity in disguise. Like it, it kind of, it brings your attention to the things that need to be attention. That's taking care of the physical body. So you, you went through this process. Like, how did you, what did you learn from it when you came out of it? I guess that's the biggest, the, the biggest uh, question. Right. I mean, the, the thing that I didn't realize was I had taken for granted my health. I was a soccer player growing up and I thought I ate pretty healthy and I thought I knew a bunch of stuff. And my parents were hippies and we ate, you know, vegan food growing up. And so I, I just, I didn't realize how quickly your health can kind of turn uh, against you or, or turn around or how delicate your body is. I mean, it's strong, but there's just so much toxicity in our lives and in the air. And there's a lot, you know, that we have to work against to maintain good health. And um, I guess there, cause like there's the nutritional component and then there's like the emotional component. And I think like a lot of us don't really do a good job of taking care of the emotional load that we go through every day and how our body digests and interprets stress and where it goes, you know, in your physicality, like in acting, that's something that's, we visit all the time is you literally your muscles and your, your system it holds your stress somewhere in your jaw or in your, you know, hips or stomach. And so you're always trying to kind of loosen it up so that you can move and speak and behave in a way that's free for your character. So that was a really interesting voyage into learning like the, you know, connection between health and, and, and stress in your body. But then there's the nutritional component, which is just constantly shifting. <laughs> and there's just so many new discoveries that are being made all the time. And the biggest, biggest one, like when I got rid of gluten and dairy, and I feel like everybody's saying this right now, but it's true. Like when I got rid of gluten and dairy, like my physique changed, my skin changed, my energy, energy levels changed. And then, so I started experimenting with different uh, diets. I did, you know, a sugar-free diet. I did a raw food diet. I, I was kind of playing around with different things to see what was going to be the most effective. But when I left, you know, being so sick with the meningitis, what I was, what I really took from that experience was that, you know, feeling good, it's not like, it's something that is continual. And so you have to be curious about your health and you have to try different things and you have to see and develop a sensitivity to your own system. So you're not just kind of like masking it or you can't really tell what's effective, you know, and what's not. Um, yeah. So there's been a lot of play with like supplements. There's been a big, big, that was like, about two years ago, like a big a discovery for me, um, like actually having like the sensitivity when you respond to a supplement and you're like, wow, you know, like what a joy, like what a good discovery that, you know, X, Y, Z, like iodine was one for me, um, ubiquinol or like CoQ10 enzymes um, were a big one and omega-3s were a big one for me that were really impactful. And then more recently, um, the mass enzymes were so important for me. So thank you. Um, I use those all the time now because uh, they're just so helpful. Um, 
Yeah. One of the things I've noticed um, has evolved over, uh, I've been in the health industry for, I guess now we're going plus 30 years. And um, <laughs> this is something that I think is, I think you touched on, it's really important, is that you took the time to experiment mm -hmm. with a variety of different diets and used probably the greatest tool that we have, which is our ability to observe what, what happened. How did you stay so flexible? I think a lot of people get very rigid into a dietary pattern. I mean, you, know, you, you kind of hinted that you grew up in vegan and I always, <laughs> I, I've been a vegetarian for a long, almost 20 years now. And I, I always say, I'm not one of these vigilante yeah. <laughs> vegans, you know, like I can't stand like the, the con condemnation. Um, but oftentimes you get stuck in a, like say in a, veg, a vegan diet, maybe early up growing up, you experimented some other things. How did you use that flexibility or what was the mindset going into that flexibility before then you, and then we'll get to the supplement side of it in a second. But I, I'm, I'm curious about your experimentations and your diets. Well, I think, um, I mean, <laughs> The, the list of like health problems I've, I've gone through like after the meningitis were pretty uh, complicated. So like one of, like I was experiencing really bad muscle and body pain. So one of my doctors in Montreal said, um, uh, we think you have fibromyalgia. And I remember being like, what is fibromyalgia? <laughs> oh my God. And then, so I went to go see a bunch of other doctors and then there was like arguments among them. And I was just like, I'm not sure what's going on. I just know, you know, my body's in pain. And right. so, um, working, like I was just kind of going through and seeing a lot of doctors. And so it was really like the quest to regain my energy, alleviate the pain and detoxify my system was the incentive. Like that was the, the catalyst, I guess. And now like in the last, like that was, you know, over 10 years ago. So in the last little while I found, somewhat of a balance, but I'm still trying to play around with my diet because, you know, your life circumstances change. The city that you live in changes. The water quality is different. The, you know, the weather is different and there's so many, or what, you know, your demands are in your life and how stressful your life is and how much you're sleeping. There's, these are all things that are changing all the time. And so I guess that definitely has been part of the story with why I'm still, you know, playing around with food and what time I eat food and, and trying to observe how, what my energy is like. And also on set, I mean, like we're on set, like my call times sometimes are like, your call time is 4 a.m. And it's like two hours outside of the city. And I'm like, okay, so it's a two hour drive time. So I have to leave by 2 AM. So I have to wake up at 1:30 in the morning. What, what time do I even go to sleep to wake up at that time? So the, the, the demands of my life are also very um, mm -hmm. volatile. They change all the time. So it, it, you know, yeah, it requires a lot of attention <laughs> to. I, I think that's a, a really, cause you got so many things going on. Um, you know, obviously you're in an extremely, um, competitive marketplace in other words that there's so much relying on how you look and how you perform as as an actress and that sort of things what are some of the things that you're able to do with such a varied schedule as far as not just on your dietary size but what do you do on an exercise size how do you stay in shape how do you manage these crazy hours because i know i know there's a lot of people listening to this going well, she looks great. I can't believe she's had these challenges and she's running restaurants and acting and traveling and living in three cities. Like, how does that work out? What's a, what's a day in the life? Of oh God. Okay. Here we go. Um, I got really into yoga. I got really into hot yoga because um, the detox component. So like being able to sweat, like not too, I can't do like the big rooms. That's too hot for me. I got into yoga to, you know, make sure that, that I'm detoxifying my body. Mm -hmm. uh, one thing I always hated was strength training. I just didn't ever want to do it. I was more into cardio and I was more, and then I got into yoga. And now I'm learning that a lot of your energy comes from having, you know, good muscle mass and, and just a strong physique. And there's a lot of energy, like benefits to your energy and aging and all that kind of stuff. Um, and even like physical, if we're talking about like body pain, like 
holding your body upright and together properly so that you don't develop bad postural habits or things that just cause you pain and you know as you get older so right now i'm doing a lot of strength training and i'm boxing which i recommend to everybody because it's literally the only you know activity that i've discovered in the last 10 years that I'm addicted to. Like I want to go to boxing all the time and I just want to learn and I want to figure out how to get better and, and learn technique and watch boxing movies and I'm watching, you know, <laughs> um, all the cool techniques that they're doing and um, it's really fun and engaging and it's playful. And, and so if anybody's looking for something that's different, um, definitely look into that. But those are the three things that I'm focusing on right now. <laughs> that's great. Uh, it's actually, a, that's a, it's a really excellent combination. You've got flexibility, you've got speed and timing and agility, and then you've got a little bit of strength training. So it's a, it's interesting how many people, um, whatever discipline, as they move further and further along their journey, they start to cultivate these other aspects. Like for me, now that I live a more sedentary lifestyle, I, I make a habit of doing sprinting three times a week, which I, you know, like I, I get out there and sprint on the beach or sprint on the treadmill if I'm traveling. And now having been so much in the muscle mass side of thing, I have to add in flexibility training and yogas and things like that, which is so the opposite thing. And like my physiotherapist yeah. was like, stop doing yoga. You've done, you need to build like muscle. You're overdoing it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And for me, it's the opposite. It's, it's <laughs> stiffening up as, as, as you age. So I think it's, it's good to, to keep an, uh, an open mind. So um, let's talk about the restaurant for a second, because then we'll get into the acting side. So mm. I, you know, it's so fascinating that you're in finance <laughs> and somehow you have time to open a restaurant. How did that happen? God, I mean, that was just total insanity. I remember, well, so. What's one, the name of the, first, let's tell everybody, what's the restaurant? Uh, right. Where is it? The restaurant is named The Parlor and mm. it is in Vancouver in the Yaletown district, which is, um. I don't know, this kind of like trendy park corner of downtown. And uh, we're opening our second in, in Toronto on Queen Street West. Um, I mean, King Street, King and Bathurst. And um, and yeah, it's like, it's a it's a funky little joint. We, we our main kind of, we're known for our pizza. So we don't do like a Napoli style, but we do like, you know, we do like a sexy, light, um, airy dough. And then we have a bunch of tapas and and lots of wine. <laughs> and um about how it started i mean i always wanted to own a restaurant like i remember going to this restaurant here called global and i was talking i was there with my mom and i was 17 and the owner had just opened and he came up and i i said to him i was like I, i'm gonna have my own restaurant one day <laughs> and he was like well you know it's like one of the hardest businesses to get involved in and i was like i'm gonna do it i'm gonna do it <laughs> fast forward you know whatever, 15 years, and our restaurant is actually across the street from that one, um, where I said that so long ago. But when I was getting my finance degree, I was always writing, typing up business plans for restaurants, business plans for restaurants. It's only like the only kind of one I wanted to explore. And then I met um, one of my partners who was a chef at another place here, called Cactus Club, for 15 years. And uh, he decided that he wanted to open up his own venture and I was like I've been writing business plans on this for a long time and we felt that Vancouver needed to have you know kind of like a, a funky boutique Montreal type supper club so that was the energy that we were going for and then we just kind of we pulled in you know another friend who had who was in the family business uh, family restaurant he has a place called La Bodega here and uh, the three of us got together and we birthed the restaurant. <laughs> That's so awesome because um, it's, it's bringing back all my memories of Vancouver because I've been to all these places. <laughs> so it's really, it's really nice to, 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 meet, yeah. to, meet, to meet you and, and, and find out about some of these kind of aspects. So um, how long has the restaurant been operational? It's been uh, 2012 in December, so six years, almost six years exactly. Yeah, that, that's super successful in the restaurant industry. Now, how do you balance the restaurant? And you said you're opening another one in Toronto. <laughs> yeah. 
So how does all this work? How do, how do you run restaurants? Oh get my up, God. Get, get up at 1.30 in the morning to make <laughs> right? film calls, work out. How do you do that? I mean, I think oh, it was, oh, I mean, when you first, when we first opened the restaurant, it was like, you know, we were scrounging pennies in the you know, corners of our couches to finance it. And, um, right. and then it started, you know, then we started making an income, like money was coming in and there was revenue. So then we could pay people and pay them, you know, hire a manager. So it didn't have to be us. And, and over the course of the years, of course, you know, your involvement can become less, you're still involved, but we were like living and breathing and sleeping at the restaurant <laughs> because it just required so much attention. It was a brand new baby, you know? Um, at the same time, that's actually when the acting started taking off. So I would just have to, I would be memorizing my lines, you know, in the back, in the kitchen, behind the bar often, and, and driving to my acting jobs, memorize. I was just constantly memorizing lines when I was doing anything. Like when I was just walking around and I was in the shower, like I had to kind of find ways of doing two things at the same time for those two years and um and and there wasn't much time to work out i'm not gonna be honest right. i'm not gonna lie i'm not gonna lie but um yeah at the time there was it was just all restaurant for for those two years i guess and um one thing i did experience though was how important food is when you're when we're talking about like physique you know and like we i work out to get rid of you know divest some energy and to get some good you know pheromones in my body and to feel good and and i you know need it for like my soul but if we're talking about like physically looking good you know i think a lot of people work out for a couple of different reasons but i think they forget that food is such a big part of like losing of trimming up and like losing the weight and, and, you know, fitting into those pair of jeans since high school. <laughs> and yeah. so we actually started like, I forced them to put like a bunch of like raw food items like on the menu so I could have like my vegetarian raw food things. Cause otherwise it was just pizza every day, all day. So we, uh, I literally put things on the menu for myself so I could order it and, and not just, yeah, be snacking on pizza all the time. But, that's yeah. so, uh, that's so awesome. So you get kind of the restaurant up and running and you've also got your acting career. Talk about some of the, the pieces that you've, you've worked on and which, and, and what is it like as a business owner and as an actress, like what's, it, it, those seem like almost very, very different worlds. Yeah, I mean, it's interesting. On the one hand, they are different worlds. And on the other hand, you know, they're very similar. Like I look at my acting as, you know, a one woman business. So like I'm an entrepreneur. I you know, have to treat what my, my art as an enterprise too, you know, in the business component of it. Um, which is so crazy sometimes because it is such a creative experience. And like when you really dip into the craft, you're working on really deep things like human connection and, and vocal vibrations and sound and, and, you know, physicality and stuff like that. Um, but there is a business component to it. Um, and same, and then the restaurant, but you know, that's the thing, like with the acting, I find myself very insular. Like I like to stay home. I like to like, read my books and get weird and do my vocal techniques and, and, you know, train and study and focus. And being at the restaurant is almost like the antithesis to that. It's very stimulating. There's a lot of people around. There's, you know, I can't get two steps in the door without someone coming and running up to me with like two shots of, you know, booze, like, come on, let's celebrate. Let's party. Let's, let's have a nice time. And, it's great, but it requires a lot of discipline to go between both ventures or, or commitments. So I try to be very so selective with when I go to the restaurant. I can't go too much on the weekend because <laughs> it's, it's a lot of energy, a lot of, uh, you know, friends there that I want to stay and just eat dinner with all night, but I can't do that every day. Correct. 
The Bioptimizer mission is to help more of the world fix their digestion at a core level. The truth is your digestion is only as good as your enzyme levels. Imagine trying to build a house with a tree. It's impossible. You need to chop the tree down into small pieces. Similarly, in order for your food to be used by your body, it must be broken down into a bioavailable form. And that's what enzymes do, converting protein into amino acids, fats into specific fatty acids, and carbohydrates into usable energy units. We start out with an abundance of enzymes, and that's why kids can digest just about anything really quickly. The thing is, is cooking food kills enzymes as they cannot survive at temperatures above 118 degrees. So years of this ends up depleting our bodies and leads to weak digestion. Taking digestive enzymes like masszymes, which has an incredibly high level of protease for digesting protein, as well as other critical enzymes like lipase, amylase, and others is a total game changer. Suddenly, you strengthen your digestion, eliminate gas and bloating, boost metabolism, and multiply your energy. Most importantly, you fix your digestion at a core level. To get started with Masszymes and to save 10% on your first order, go to Masszymes.com. That's M-A-S-S-Z-Y-M-E-S.com and use the code MASS10, M-A-S-S-1-0. What are some of the things you talked about earlier, you talked about um, holding energy in the body. And I think this is a very fascinating topic and that you're, you study this in acting. How do you, how do you feel or what's, where do you think people get into trouble or how they can release maybe pent up energy inside the body? So as an actress, but you, there's, I think there's some really important health things. I know I work with chiropractors and networking people and holistic healers, and they'll talk about energy buildup or lower energy in particular organs. That's also in Chinese medicine. What have you learned as an actress about the role of energy in the body, both on a negative or a positive side, how you hold it or how, how you get through those things? Yeah. I mean, well, I, you'll often find, I mean, the, the easiest example of that will be in, in a muscle. Well, you know, a lot of us will clench our jaws, our shoulders, um, we hold stress in our stomach. Some of us hold stress in our stomachs, but our emotional core is in our stomach. So we spend a lot of time, like, you know, every day when I'm like going to set, we'll do like, I'll, I'll do a relaxation exercise where I sit in my a chair and you just stretch one muscle at a time and you just keep on trying to relax and you're trying to release that muscle. And often it will produce an emotional experience in you. You will cry or you can, you know, you need to release where you're holding that tension. And it requires a tremendous amount of relaxation to actually allow your system to emotionally give up what you've been storing in your system. Um, but it's, it's tough to do, but it's so necessary because like these, these emotions that we see, stack in our system, that's what ultimately what will lead to disease, you know? And, um, and I don't think, and I think that's something that really fascinates me. It's something that I find hugely fascinating is, you know, vibrations and vote and voice and how you can get affected by the pitch of somebody else's voice and how it will connect to your emotional core when you're seeing an authentic performance on screen or in real life, if you witness something happen, um, so I'm really interested with um, emotions, but I mean, it's a topic I, I don't know, we could talk about forever, <laughs> That's, and, you know, very much about what we do. There's just a lot of different relaxation techniques. You can tap on certain points to release, you know, um, but meditation is another big one that I, I use too. Is, is that common in the, in the acting world um, for, I think this is kind of like, kind of like an insider look that people might not think about in the world of acting is that there are processes to release tension inside the body and that stuff. I think that it's kind of surprising for me that actors would engage in that. Is that something that's common throughout the industry? Yeah, I think so. And I think it has to do too with, with what you're 
training background is I think a lot of theater people that end up on screen, they have, that's, these are very kind of the foundational techniques that you have, you know, in theater that you also have in film and television, but sometimes if people just start in film and TV, they don't, they're not introduced to those concepts early on. They might discover them later, but yeah. That makes sense. Is there any favorites that you have for, for releasing tension in the body? Because I would think with the schedule you have, you must have a lot of tension. It's a lot of pressure. I do. Um, I am someone who likes to release with my voice. So like, I'll, I'll tap on my chest. Uh, I'll do that. I love working on my voice and my vocal cords. And just like kind of swaying and getting into your body and lying on the floor and just massaging your neck and rolling around and <laughs> just talking to yourself like you're, you know, five years old and you're just like allowing yourself to play. I think one of the things that we always forget about when we start, you know, growing up and becoming adults is that we still need play in our lives. And um, that imagination is so healthy for you. So, yeah. <laughs> I feel sorry for my neighbors because they probably hear like all sorts of weird things. <laughs> going uh, yeah, yeah. I think every morning when I'm getting ready for set. I think, but. I think you bring up a really good point, and that is in today's world, oftentimes we're so focused on the outcome or the performance thing, or there's a there's a kind of a level of seriousness that's pervading this. Like we've got to be number one, or we've got it, and you know, in all these various competitive marketplaces and stuff. But bringing play mm -hmm. into one's life and using that as a tool, it's kind of like the innate wisdom of a child. And I, I remember Einstein saying that imagination was more important than intelligence. And his, he solved most of his challenges, not through intelligence, but through imagining and imagination. And that's what children do, essentially. Oh, my gosh. It's so true. And you know what's funny and, and wild and sad and weird is like, there was a time where like, you know, especially at the dawn of a business when you're just like really hoping that it goes well and you're like, oh my gosh, like, you know, you're responsible for so many different things and you have, you know, 150 staff and they have bills or, you know, you're just pushing and pushing and pushing and working and working and working. And somewhere along the line, it stops being fun for a minute. You know, you, you lose track suddenly of, of, why you're doing something and are you really having fun and you know right now what i'm trying to do is i'm trying to reintegrate the the joy of play into my life so even like yesterday i was tired i you know have to go to the studio today and everything's crazy and there's a lot of my play i didn't want to go to the gym and i especially didn't want to go to this one class because it was like soup it looked very difficult and very complicated and i just sat in my car outside of the studio <laughs> thinking about whether I wanted to go inside or not. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to just go there downstairs into this dark gym with like all these bodybuilders and I'm just going to make this playtime. And as soon as I made that decision that like I was just going to walk in there, you know, like a novice, I didn't have anything to prove. I wasn't, you know, there to show how strong or healthy I was. And I was just going to walk in and be like, I have no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> teach me everything and you have that kind of innocence and that willingness to learn, it changes everything, you know? And after that, yesterday I walked out of the gym, I had a great time, but I was like, I need to apply that mentality to so many more things in my life and not be afraid of, you know, afraid of anything really, just approach things with, you know, the, the, um, the innocence and, and the joy of learning a new thing. It's, it's really good integration for people because I think it's easy in today's world to get kind of lost in the pace of everything and lose the lose the moment uh, which you can never get back and and engaging and and having fun and even if you're doing serious work and you are uh, with you know payrolls and running restaurants and this sort of thing and then also you know the demands of the of the industry that you're in as, a, as an actress which is which is extreme as you noted I think it's really cool that you've figured that one out so what i'm going to go back to because you talked on some dietary stuff so what yeah. what's what's your typical dietary practices uh now and how do you handle the the time shifts with your diet because that's i think a big <laughs> that's, that's a big disruptor 
Yeah, that is definitely. I mean, <laughs> especially with all the traveling, like in the off season, we travel a lot. Um, so it's very disorienting. But one one thing that I do a lot, like I always start my day with a bulletproof coffee. <laughs> right For the most part, like I, I, I'm now I'm alternating with, um, I have a, a bone broth in the morning even yep. um, because I just need With the coffee? Not with the coffee. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know That'd if you poured it in way. like a bone broth. <laughs> Right. I'm coming up with my own new new things here. Um, no, but I'll even start the day with bone broth because um, you know just trying to make sure that my gut is healed and there's no leaky gut and there's you know none of that kind of stuff. And I take a tremendous amount of probiotics, prebiotics, and mm-hmm. um, just really working on keeping my gut health good because that's yeah. been a problem for me in the past. Um, and then I'm, you know, I'm flirting around with like the keto thing right now. So mm-hmm. not too strong. Like I was doing intermittent fasting and keto, like really, really strict keto for a while. And it was not working for me at all. I was finding that my, sw- I was kind of going through these swings and, and the working out was exhausting me. And I looked into it further and I saw and read that women actually need to be cycling with carbs, you know, there's different ways of doing that, but I'll kind of introduce carbs every second day or whatnot. So, but I'm, you know, making sure that my hormones are taken care of. And, but yeah, the keto thing has been really dramatic, like for me, like it's really helped me. That's, that's the current. Now, do you do program. any, um, do you do any uh, specifics on testing or anything to manage your hormones or anything like that? Do you have an ND or do you have someone that watches that stuff for you? Yeah, I'm doing, I have to go in for like one of those, like I've, I've done like the hormonal blood tests and that didn't really show anything exciting. Um, so I have to do a different one that's coming up in two weeks. But I did do like, I got my Viome um, test done. Right. And so I'm, I'm, I'm doing a lot of those lab tests because again, like I think that your doctor can only help you so much. I think that we need to help ourselves. Um, and take control of our own health. So, I'm 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 doing the tests, and then I just want I'm going to be bringing them to my doctor. Just be like, there you go. Now tell me what's going on. Yeah, yeah. I, I think, I think <laughs> establishing patterns is also something that's important because yeah. um, everybody's baselines can be different. Then you know if you're doing this regularly, I find that all of a sudden you can see suddenly if there's a shift or a change, and you go, oh. You know, is that response to a diet or is that response to stress or is there something else? And I think building up that history is is as critical as the tests itself. Um, So how often do you, you, I'm assuming you do certain tests here and there or? Yeah, I do kind of pretty much everything (laughs) each year, (laughs) which is, you know, we do gut map, we do a hormone test, we do blood test. uh, um, I have a number of kind of more electronic place. I just did the Metatron recently, which can actually have, it's a predictive model about showing inflammation and where the trajectory of that can be inside the body. No Uh, way. Yeah, I got a really great guy. If you come down here to Santa Monica, I can hook you up. Oh my gosh. Yeah, and it's fantastic. And he actually supersedes this with astrology, if you can, (laughs) but it's really far. That's my guy. (laughs) Yeah, it's it's really far out. And it's interesting how if you look at Ayurvedic science, um, which was the origin of astrology. They tied in astrological aspects into your physical health and would prescribe herbs or gemology and these type of things. Well, this guy actually fuses those. He was classically trained in Asia. And so he's using cutting edge technology and then he's looking at your chart. Well, you have these energies come in and sure enough, it's affecting your body. And it's, it, the, the correlation is kind of mind blowing. Yeah, and I have um, I have a chiropractor, a couple of chiropractors. Um, I got a guy in Vancouver I call the Wizard. He's he's amazing. And That's what I need actually. I'm really interested in chi- like finding a good chiropractor right now. That's yeah. I, I think a chiropractor. I think that's a staple. Yeah. In one's health, and then my ND, um, Katrine Volinsky, who uh, works with the company, and uh, she's awesome. She kind of dials in all my little nuances and does a variety of different tests. And she just kind of orders the tests that I need to do and then interprets the data for me. And so yeah. 
we're testing probably something every three months. And then I just make sure I've get everything done each year, hormone tests, things like that. So yeah, I mean, there's a, this kind of full body covers all these different like A to Z, all these different st- scans and tests and stuff like that. Because right now, like I've done something here and I, I you know, was doing like DEXA scans kind of just right. like, where, like my muscle, like my whatever, all that kind of stuff. Um, so I learned you know, that I had muscle imbalances and then I could kind of like rebalance my body and I figured, and oddly it said that my, this last scan I did said that my bone density was waning. And I was like, oh my gosh, like that, that was problematic, obviously. So I had to get on top of that with some vitamin D and some um, other stuff. But yeah, I'm really interested in these, these tests. Um, I guess it's about... I don't know, like finding the right one or the right doctor or, yeah. or what is it? <laughs> well, you know, one of the things we have on the Awesome Health Program is we, I call assembling your Jedi Council. <laughs> so I have, a, I have a variety of experts in each area. Katrine's probably the kind of the head honcho. And then um, from there, we'll, we'll have the specifics, of course, the wizard uh, from a chiropractic perspective. He, he's an amazing kinesiologist and things like that. And then I have some more esoteric people. I have the Metatron guy Then we have our regular hormone tests. And then there's always, there's always a new person worked into the mix because, you know, you kind of geek out over coffee with your friends and like, no, I just met this lady and she does this. You got to go see her. So off you go and totally. doing some more. So I, I find for me, that's, it's as much, um, it's as much of a, a fun endeavor as it is, <laughs> data driven so it's kind of both <laughs> me you know? too i mean i i don't know i totally geek out on this stuff like i'm got like like sleep monitors like the aura rings and like i'm into like really into leds right now and also i mean i just want to surround myself with this stuff i find it so exciting and so interesting it's just i can't get enough i need to kind of <laughs> slow down you know sometimes and be like okay what are the priorities right now and i think you know, the hormone testing for me is a big fun uh, right now. I think a lot of women have adrenal fatigue, adrenal problems. That seems to be rampant right now. So it is. Um, there's a lot of stuff from um, Dr. Cruz on mitochondria and, and its effect. And of course, if you're in right in Vancouver, there's a real vitamin D issue. We just don't get enough sun there. And it's funny. I mean, California now, um, and I'm less tan than I was when I was in Vancouver because I would go to literally I have to go get I'd go to tanning beds two or three times a week just to keep my mood up because I noticed if I didn't if I didn't get that sunshine if I didn't get the light therapy and of course now they have the juve technology and this red light therapies and all these you know you can get um, full spectrum lighting and yeah. reduce the blue light exposure from here you can kind of go down that Dave talks a lot about that on his podcast on Bulletproof which mm-hmm. is great he's got a lot of great info what are the top things I would say, or, or, and this can be anything, I, I'm curious to know what devices, technologies, or products have made the biggest difference in your life? Ooh, that's a big question. I'm interested to know your answer to that one as well. <laughs> <laughs> um, I like have this, my Halo sport. <laughs> this is awesome. I love this. This has got me like. So what is it? Tell it. Tell, it, tell everybody it, what it is. It's. <laughs> it basically it sends electrical impulses to your brain and it stimulates your brain, the part of your brain that talks to your muscles. So it basically boosts the neuroplasticity when you're going, you know, to do an exercise. For me, it was boxing or dancing. Like I am a horrendous dancer. I cannot pick up any choreography <laughs> at all. And I've been used, I was like, as a test, I'm like, it, you know, if I can finally start learning some choreography, then I might be a believer. And now I'm dancing like week and boxing and it just helps your muscles and your, your body kind of process. And, and What's it me. called? Halo sport. Halo Sport. Okay, great. We'll uh, put some notes on it. People and can. then I have um, I have the Aura Ring that's on its way. I think like getting on top of my sleep will be a big, big, like big thing because I used to have insomnia right before I got the meningitis. Actually, like a lot of I think my health problems came from lack of rest and not being able to relax. So because my schedule is so crazy and you know. I'm my, I sleep at odd hours. Like I really want to make sure that I'm, I'm giving my body that recovery time. 
So uh, sleep tracking, I think, will be a big one for me. Yeah, well. the ring is great. And my, my business partner, Matt Gallant, has invested about, I think it's up to about $50,000 now in his sleep technology. Uh, I mean, he's in, he's in a Faraday cage. He's got the sleep thing. He's got the, the Delta wave component. He's got a, oh my gosh. Pad. he's got a customized Essentia mattress. He's going to like, he's, he's as deep down. The, I always have tried to find ways not to sleep. He's always, trying to <laughs> so we're, we're very, uh, we're very opposite on that, but it's something that does uh, play in what else would you say is important to you? Or ring, I think it's great. Um, the light, like I have like some red light therapy stuff here. I'm hoping that I'm going to be getting, there's like a new Juve device that's coming out. They said in November. So um, I'm going to be playing with that. But I mean, I want to get my hands on kind of, I wanted to put like a sauna in here. <laughs> like, yeah, totally. Red sauna. I'm trying to figure out like where I can fit it. Um, and then I just have like kind of, you know, massage tools and stuff like that to get to get uh, attention in my muscles and, and uh, supplements you mentioned earlier, but what was your favorite supplements? Uh, my favorite supplements, I think the ones that made the biggest in impact were, you know, any mitochondrial support ones. Um, so for me, it was ubiquinol or CoQ10 along I mean, with I use both of them myself. I love them. Yeah. They're, I mean that I need those. <laughs> I realized. And then same with um, omega threes. What else am I using? Oh, the iodine surprisingly like had a really big effect on me. And then the mass enzymes had a huge effect on me. I've been, you mentioned it in different podcasts that you open them up and you put them into your shakes. Correct. Yeah. Which is like my favorite new thing now. Like I am, I like do that literally every day. Like it's my favorite new thing because I grew up a vegetarian and I have had a lot of digestive issues. And so I stay, I need meat, but I stay away from it because I can't digest it properly. I can't digest it properly. So I was taking, you know, I was doing, I don't know, apple cider vinegar and I was taking like different kind of um, digestive enzymes, but none of them were really helping me. Um, so that's a huge game changer for me because if you're eating all this healthy food and you're spending all this money at Whole Foods and you're not even absorbing any of the nutrients, then what's, what's the point, you know? Um, so yeah, that's, those are my favorite right now. Yeah, using the mass times is, and this is something for people who work out, if you actually mix the mass times into your shakes before you work out, it's more effective than taking the shake after. You, you literally start recovering in the workout. I want to put it in everything. Like I was talking, I almost put it in my, in my, um, in my bone broth this morning. I was like, I'm not sure if this is even the same thing, but yeah, actually <laughs> it'll, it'll work better. Um, it'll, it'll work better. Really? Yeah. That's yeah. Amazing. And yeah, the, but, the probiotics, of course. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think it's good. Interesting. Especially in today's world where we're subjected to so much blue light, so much stress, it seems, because there's all this input from digital technology it really has an effect on our nervous system tension mm -hmm. in our intestinal tract we feel it in our guts and that can restrict food and so all of these techniques including of releasing energy in the body using things like masszymes and probiotics to make sure that you have your gut health i think that's uh, it, it just continues to grow and i've seen literally so many people in that area say i had i had no idea what it was like until i really had a good digestive aid product that i didn't realize before i just thought Dis digestive dysfunction was normal because people have kind of accepted that as normal. And when they get on this stuff and they go, wow, I, I didn't know. It's bizarre what you can start to accept as normal. You know what I mean? Like you, you just, until you know better, until you try something different and you're like, oh my gosh, like, you're like what was I doing before? You know? Um, and I think that's why it's so important to experiment, to be playing with things as I mean you're one curiosity away from like a huge health turn. <laughs> that, that's so true. And the importance of staying open and staying flexible. So I know we're coming up on the hour. Um, I wanted to ask you what's happening for you now. What's, what's going on? You're opening a new restaurant or any upcoming 
movies or anything's coming up that you're that you're working on? Yeah. What, what's happening in Tasha's world now? I know there's a ton of things. <laughs> well, the <laughs> there is a movie that's going to be when well, we're done. Right now, I'm filming The Hundred. We're filming in Vancouver. We're filming in the mountains. Um, what's here. that about? Tell tell us what's that. What's uh, that? It's a post apocalyptic show um, about a hundred delinquents. I mean, that get sent to Earth, and after a nuclear apocalypse, hundred years after a nuclear apocalypse. And they run into, they don't know if there's people on Earth, and then they discover there are people on Earth. And then, of course, there's a lot of uh, of problems that start. But uh, right. <laughs> there's a lot of drama. So we're shooting that until February. And right now we're doing season six. And it is the most, it's, this season doesn't look anything like the previous seasons. It's really wow. exciting. Um, so... It's been really fun, but, uh, and then in the new year, I'm actually working on doing something. I mean, I'm super, I'm like you, I'm super like nerdy and into all this kind of health stuff. But like one thing that I do now, like when I go to the comic cons and I go and I meet the fans and, you know, girls who are in their twenties who are my age when I got sick with meningitis and had to start dealing with all this stuff. I'm, I'm thinking like, well, I am working on a YouTube channel to start communicating some of the stuff that we're talking about to these younger women, because I don't think that there's many girls who are connecting to all of this amazing information that's out there. So um, I'm working on a YouTube channel that will be health related as well. And um, yeah, and then there's a movie in March that I will be talking about next year <laughs> at a new restaurant in March. Wow. Oh <laughs> what's, the new, what's the new restaurant? Where is it? It's on, it's called The Parlor. It's on King Street West and Bathurst. Yeah. Oh, I know the area very well. There you go. So, uh, and that's going to be open in March of yeah. this, of, of uh, 2019. Oh, wow. That's, that's really, really soon. So yeah. very exciting. Um, before we go, any, any things that you'd like to communicate to your audience, to your fans, to people who might be suffering from health or people who want to optimize their health? What's, any, any integrations you'd like to share with them? I mean, I think it just comes down to, I think it can feel, you know, there are times and they still happen. I mean, even this week, there's times that you can just feel really low and really um, hopeless almost, you know, and it's just about creating that curiosity and, and, energy and connecting to different sources and podcasts and informational things that will galvanize you to make the changes for yourself because um, I think that we can all find ways of improving our lives and our energies and, and sharing that with one another so yeah Tasha this has been so revealing and <laughs> so awesome I really appreciate that you kind of going and sharing some of these things I, I love the integrations and and just the depth of being an actress being a businesswoman uh, and all the things that you've kind of combined together. And uh, I think it's really, really amazing. I'm, I'm delighted that you've got benefits from our products. By the way, for yes. people listening on it, we've got a coupon code. We'll be in let it here by optimizer.com slash Tassia. We'll put it in the show notes. We'll put in the show notes about some of the other things that you mentioned that you use. I think what's interesting is I see a commonality with almost every one of those products. That, actually, all the products that you listed. I myself use. And yes, so, right. <laughs> so I think that's really fascinating in itself. That, and I've seen that over and over and over again, the things that people benefit from. There's a lot of similarities. And more importantly, I love the curious, playful attitude. So important in today's world to not lose sight of playing, having fun, being curious, staying open and moving on to the next thing. So thanks for joining us today. Really appreciate you having the Awesome Health Podcast. And where can people reach you? They can reach me on Instagram, Twitter, YouTube. My handle's the same across all, which is Tasia Tellis, T-A-S-Y-A-T-E-L-E-S. Tasia, this has been a slice. I know our listeners are going to love it. <laughs> and uh, I look forward to seeing the new episodes coming out next year. Uh, thank you so much, Wade. This is so much fun. Thank you for having me. And now for a Bioptimizer's fixed digestion tip. Turn cultured foods into superfoods. Raw fermented foods like sauerkraut and low sugar live yogurt can be good for you, but rarely have enough of the right probiotic strains for therapeutic benefit. So here's a way that you can turn them into superfoods. 
what I do is I get some raw sauerkraut or a healthy yogurt. Ideally, you know, it's grass fed or coconut based. And you can empty three caps of P3OM into a container and mix it up thoroughly. Leave it at room temperature for a couple of hours before putting it back into the fridge. And what's going to happen is these probiotic levels will be multiplied. In fact, it doubles every 20 minutes. And then what you're going to get is you're going to have a food with strong proteolytic activity. To learn more about P3OM and why its patented strains make it the strongest probiotic available, go to www.bioptimizers.com. Thank you for listening to the Bioptimizers Awesome Health Podcast. You can find more information at bioptimizers.com.